Mystery Mondays. 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 Mystery Just come to meet small childs with your green skin Don't tremble now, cause I'll look after you Yes, I'll look after you Passing of time. <laughs> it comes with the passage of time. It comes with the passing of time. It comes with the passage of time.
Knowledge comes with the passage of time Everything will be clear with the passage of time It comes with the passage of time It comes with the passage of time <laughs> That was our oh, new, yeah. our new track um, the Passage of Time. <laughs> <laughs> From the album... Uh, Green oh, Child. Per- oh, b- oh uh, Peruvian Altitudes. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised, oh, the cameras are rolling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, I just thought I'd double check. <laughs> Welcome to Mystery Mondays, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our um, improv uh, intro today. Um, there, that one, as I said, most of them, they are all improv. Some of them are super improv, and some of them are like a little bit of uh, a little bit of prep. That one was like 10, 15 minutes prep max. Mm. So I'm, I, I like that one. That's one of my favourite ones. I yeah, mean, that was one good. of your best, I was about to say. Yeah, uh, Passage of Time is right up there with Peruvian mm. Attitudes, and maybe uh, and, yeah. and one or two other ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I hope everyone's had a good week. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening. As usual, we have a, a mystery for you this evening, and it's my turn for a mystery oh, this yeah. week. Um, as usual, I'm not as prepared as I should be, so I haven't got any <laughs> ambiance music up. Where's so I'm gonna, the ambiance? I'm going to quickly get that up now. Uh, but yeah, thanks for chilling with us every week. Wonder what we have in store this time. What will the mystery be? I was saying to the lads earlier on, um, it's quite cool because I love it when a plan comes together. And the intro this week, Bullwinkle commented, sounds almost like quite fairy tale like, mm. which is very fitting for the mystery I have for you today. So, mm. mystical ambient music, that's freaking got me sold. Fairy tale like. Alright, let's try this one, shall we? Here we go. Let's try this one, shall we, lads? Oh, baby. I can hear it already. Where are you? Not really, but kind of. Where are you? Ah. Uh, right. Is everybody yeah. ready? Is I'm everybody ready. ready? What is it, man? This is the mystery of the green children of Woolpit. Wow. Oh, Either of you ever heard of this? Green. I have not. This is a medieval mystery. Mm. But this is 100% verified from multiple historical sources. Um, and this is... This has gone. Ah. This has gone down as a true. This is not a. a mm. Has not covered this in in a Pandora's box before. Oh, we Me might. And you, we like might, a really we might old have done. one. We might. I don't remember like talking about this. I think it was pre Bullwinkle. Pre Bullwinkle. Yeah. We might have. Um, we might have done. Man spoke about it. We might have done. Yeah. The thing is, we've talked about so much stuff, and mm. some of it's mm. like just really quickly in passing, isn't mm. it? And other stuff is more fleshed out, but. This is the fleshed out version. So this is, yep, this is a 100% historical account from multiple historical um, scholars mm. of, of, of the medieval day. So let's get into it. This is the, the mystery, as I said, of the green children of Woolpit. The 12th century tale of the green children of Woolpit in Suffolk is a bizarre medieval story. Oh, Suffolk. Yes. Mm. Which has been, that's where you uh, used to live for a while, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Bit of significance in the mm. It's a bizarre medieval story which has been remembered for centuries. It isn't often we hear of children appearing at the edge of a field with green skin and no knowledge of any locally known language. Even today, historians debate as to what truly happened, with some going so far as to claim that the children were extraterrestrials. <sighs> one of them has appeared behind Drew for today's episode. Oh yeah, that's one oh, of them. Yeah, that's one of the green children of Woolpit. For everyone that's watching on, on YouTube. The legend of the green children of Woolpit starts during the reign of King Stephen in a rather tumultuous time in England's history that's gone down in the records as the Anarchy in the mid-12th century. Mm. The Anarchy was a civil war in England and Normandy between 1138 and 1153, which resulted in a widespread breakdown in law and order. The conflict was a war of succession, precipitated by the accidental death of William Adelin, who was the only legitimate son of King Henry I. William drowned in the sinking of the White Ship in 1120. After this, Henry I sought to be succeeded by his daughter, who was known as Empress Matilda, but was only partially successful in convincing the nobility to support her. On the death of King Henry I, King Henry I um, his nephew Stephen of Blois seized the throne. Matilda would not stand for this, and all that war ensued. Finally, after 15 years of fighting and bloodshed on both sides, Matilda's son, Henry II, was crowned King of England, and there was a unified country once more. 
The conflict was considered particularly destructive even by the standards of medieval warfare. Chroniclers stated that Christ and his saints were asleep during the period, and Victorian historians coined the term the anarchy because of the widespread chaos. But back to the story at hand. Mm -hmm. Just want to give you a bit of background information mm -hmm. about what it was like in England mm -hmm. during this time. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was already a time of, of much upheaval. And also, do you know what that story like? Well, that reminds me a little bit of of what's going on in um, Blood of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit how like King Viserys he wants Rhaenyra mm -hmm. to be the heir. Mm -hmm. But it's like people didn't fully accept it, almost like partially because she's like a woman or whatever. And then it's like a bloke ended up, like a, a male relative of his ended up taking the throne. And then like mm. it was this massive war. It's very much like that, isn't it? It's like exactly the same. Anyway, back to the main story. Woolpit, as it is now known, was known in Old English as Wolfpit. Um, and it was, this, yeah, it was an ancient village in Suffolk named after its old pits that was literally dug for catching wolves. Mm. Next to this wolf pit in around 1150, a group of villagers came across two young children with green skin and strange clothes who were apparently speaking gibberish and acting nervously. Mm. According to writings at the time by the, Inish chron the English chronicler and abbot Ralph of Coggeshall, the children were subsequently taken to the nearby home of Sir Richard de Calne, where he offered them food, but they repeatedly refused to eat. This continued for some days until the children came across some green beans that were growing in Richard de Calne's garden, which they then ate straight out of the ground. Mm. It is thought that the children lived with Richard de Calne for some years, where he was able to slowly convert them over to regular food. According to the writings of the day, this change in diet led to the children losing their green complexion. The children also slowly learnt to speak English, and once fluent, were asked where they had come from and why their skin was green. The girl replied with, We are inhabitants of what we can only roughly translate as the land of Saint Martin, who is regarded with particular veneration in the country which gave us birth. We are ignorant of how we arrived here. We only remember this, that on a certain day, when we were feeding our father's flocks in the fields of perpetual twilight, we came upon a cave. On entering the cave, we heard the sound of distant bells. We wandered through the darkness for a long time, following the chiming bells in admiration, until we came out the other side and entered into bright sunlight, which was startling. It was then that we were found by the reapers of your fields. We now know that the bells we heard in the cave are those of your church at St. Edmund's. The sun does not rise upon our countrymen, our land is little cheered by its beams, but we are contented with that twilight, which among you precedes the sunrise or follows the sunset. Moreover, a certain luminous country is seen, not far distant from ours, but we are divided from it by a very considerable river. That's a, oh. <laughs> That's a mental yeah. story, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's how, a it's how old are these children? Well, I guess by this point, I'm not, I'm not sure, maybe like teenagers by this point. Mm. I expect mm. it took them a couple of years to like learn English and get their diet normal and all that. Do you know, know what it sounds like to me? Well, Like they were like from some place in like Scandinavia or somewhere where, it, um, yeah, where, it maybe. Does, where it's only... But... Where you, where you don't get all of the, um, but think that the, the sun. The English had regular contact with Scandinavians. Mm. By this point in history, by the 1150s, there had been like Norwegian kings of England, mm. even the Normans themselves, who at this point were basically the kings of England. Yeah, they would have known they The were Normans, from as we know, were yeah. Northmen themselves. Yeah. That's where the name comes from. Yeah, so they were yeah. originally from Scandinavia. So mm. they weren't ignorant to Scandinavians. Mm. I mean, they had regular mm. trade and contact with the Danish, the Norwegians, the Swedes, etc. So although that would make a good good sense, it it, it mm. wouldn't it wouldn't mm. be the, the right answer, you know? Um, but yeah, shortly after this revelation, Richard de Caen took the children to be baptised in a local church. He probably thought, like, oh my god, these are weird little monster, monster creatures. <laughs> However, the boy died soon after his baptism from an unknown illness. Mm. Uh -huh. The girl, who later became known as Agnes, continued to work for Richard de Caen for many years as a servant. Ralph of Coggeshall describes her attitude while working there as wanton and impudent. What does that mean? So that's not very good, is it? Impudent means that you basically you don't show people respect. Uh. And wanton would imply that she was um, very free with her sexuality. 
Ah. Mm. So okay. she was, you know, if you have like wanton lust, mm. you almost like want to sleep with everything. Ah. Right. Do you know what right, I mean? Right. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Like he was filled with wanton lust. It's like you're almost like so <laughs> on demon mode, virile. Yeah. Yeah. You just want to. You're like a little dog. You know, that yeah. just wants to hump everything's yeah. leg. Ah. So, um, Agnes, you naughty girl. Mm. Um, yeah. So uh, in Scandy a way, that almost. Told you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it was like yeah. So she was probably a bit. Um, could be a bit difficult. But was also incredibly horny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he describes her attitude while working there as wanton and impudent, though she clearly never angered the lord of the manor, which makes you wonder if she was wanton with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, mean? I, can think, I can imagine if you were like the lord of the manor as well, because he obviously always took a liking to her, and there's no record ever of her displeasing him. Whereas at the time, if you were a servant in your lord's a place, bird. yeah. Mm then it would have, you know, if you angered your lord, then you would have been punished. Mm. But there's no record of her ever doing so to him, even though her her attitude is down as impudent, mm. which, as I said, is basically like a, a another word for sort of like disrespectful. disrespectful. Mm. So um, that's just an interesting thing to note. But if mm. I was like some lord of the manor and some interesting little like green girl came along <laughs> and she was almost like a bit fascinating and said she came from the land of perpetual twilight, <laughs> <laughs> I'd, yeah, pro- right. I'd probably throw her a bone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no pun intended. Eventually, she moved away um, and married the Archdeacon of Eli, who was known as Richard Barr. According to one report, the pair even had at least one child. So she was clearly, mm. you know, could could conceive, um, which... Clearly human. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's, you know, that's one thing to think. Um, so who were the green children of Woolpit? The 12th century was a much more magical and religious world than the one that we live in today, and many people of the time seriously believed that Agnes and her brother came from the fairy otherworld. The most likely explanation for the green children of Woolpit is that they were the descendants of Flemish immigrants who had been persecuted and possibly killed by either King Stephen or perhaps after him King Henry II. Lost, confused and without their parents, if the green children of Woolpit had indeed been Flemish immigrants on the run, and if they had fled into nearby Thetford Forest, it may have seemed like perpetual, like permanent twilight to the young frightened children. They may also have entered one of the many underground mine passages in the area, which finally led them to Woolpit. Mm. Dressed in strange Flemish clothes and speaking another language, the children would have, would have presented a very strange spectacle indeed to the local villagers of Woolpit. Furthermore, the green tint to the children's skin can be explained by malnourishment. There is a rare condition known as hypochromic anemia, originally known as chlorosis, which comes from the Greek word chloris, which just means greenish yellow. Mm. Chlorosis is caused by a very poor diet that affects the colour of the red blood cells and results in a noticeably green shade of the skin. Mm. In support of this theory is the fact that the girl is described as returning to normal colour after adopting a healthy diet. Other commentators have proposed a more otherworldly origin for the children. Robert Burton suggested in his 1621 book, The Anatomy of Melancholy, that the children of Woolpit fell from heaven, leading others to speculate that the children may have been extraterrestrials. In a 1996 article published in the magazine Analog, Astronomer Duncan Lunan hypothesised that their children were accidentally transported to Woolpit from their extraterrestrial home planet, <laughs> which may be trapped in a synchronous orbit around its sun, presenting the conditions for life only in a narrow twilight zone between a fiercely hot surface and a frozen dark side. He included these claims again in his 2012 book, Children from the Sky. Personally, I like to side with the more romantic theory that these children arrive from a fantastical underground elvish world of starlight, (laughs) where the native inhabitants are all green. (laughs) Since it was first recorded, the mystery of the green children of Woolpit has endured for over eight centuries. The tale has provided the inspiration for numerous poems, novels, operas and plays across the world, and continues to capture the imagination of many curious minds. While there are many uncertainties with the account, one thing is for sure, the green children of Woolpit remain, and most likely always will remain, a mystery. <gasps> and I've actually got like a little uh, a poem that was written about the children of Woolpit mm. now. An old poem which I will read out. It's a nice little poem as well. Mm. The green children of Woolpit, for medieval orphans, it's best to be green-skinned. For in the dark days of the longsword, 
when the earth was flat, when scholars were monks and dragons were real, the tendrils of myth and lore grew in every eye. Footprints of the Horned One were set in stone, only an oiled penitent brow could save the wheat and apples. Mercury dripped the silver promise of a cure on the tongue, and candle flames barely kept the vast darkness at bay. It was in this time when the tree folk and trolls spun the string that held together the rosary beads, that the green children came from under the earth to remind us of the thin veil between legend and famine. For starvation in the dark mines, a panic in the bones, illness of the liver and ragged dusty dry mouths, speaking a banned Flemish tongue of a banned people. Well, that's a thornier tale, too human for minds wooded in, in magic. But a world of twilight, where green berries and green earth nourish green kings and babes, this was fact, known by old women whose firelit whispers mossy and true, long told of the world below the soil where ancient things dwell, so best for an orphan to be steeped clothed in tongues, tongued through the lens of a twilight where green hue is magic, than for ugly facts to pick the Flemish scabs of home, of war and the murdered mothers with green skin from the rot. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool, man. That was a cool poem. Yeah, That's so awesome. there we go. Just a, yeah, it's a pretty epic poem, isn't it? Going on about like dragons and trolls yeah. and stuff. Love Have it, you man. heard of like um, Hollow Earth? Um, oh, I've heard of theory. this. Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. people think that there's like there's like underground chambers and there's become huge bits bored out in uh, under the earth that's like that, yeah. that have people living there and everything. It's quite like a common um, like sort of plot in or setting in various fiction mm. fictional you know isn't it in like books and stuff. What's the one? It's like Journey to the Center of the Earth. Mm. Mm. Who was that by? That's like a by a famous author, isn't it? Journey to the Center of the Earth. And in uh, like the yeah. Center of the Earth, I'm pretty sure yeah. there's like to like dinosaurs and stuff yeah. and like crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah, and there was also this um this account of this uh, officer or this general in in, um, in in I don't know how long ago it was, but there was a they took a massive fleet of like ships and planes out to the Antarctic. Um, oh yeah, get, I know, know this. And yeah. they and they went right out, and then they said they started getting like attacked by like UFOs and stuff. Yeah, and, like, I've heard that. Whoa. And then there was this um, there there was this like like hole basically yeah, and they went yeah. and, and he went down it and met the pe and he always proclaimed that he actually met these people that lived in the in the earth and stuff like and, and he came back and like told people about it and stuff and like no one believed him but he was like this big officer in the yeah in the was it well. was it just him uh he was the only one who went in Right. Like, yeah. But he was leading like the whole the expedition, the, expedition the charge. The, the thing is, obviously, I, um, I'm obviously I'm not saying that you know what he said was necessarily real, but um, obviously, it's, it's so few people have been that that far into Antarctica. It's, it's like it's lethal conditions. Mm. Like even if you were there in like full ski gear, the chances are you'd probably like freeze to death within an hour. It's like next level cold. Mm, yeah. Like minus like over minus forty degrees and stuff like that. Like, and that's centigrade. Isn't it like disputed as well? Like who owns it and stuff. Like there's uh, there's different yeah. flags that have been put it's, down yeah, from yeah, different yeah. people in the. Don't like all different countries like own different parts of it and stuff yeah i'm not people, sure like i think like it's like for research and stuff right mm. but i know that a lot of people a lot of it's quite common isn't it's it for mysterious. people to say that over antarctica like a ridiculous amount of ufo activity takes place yeah, and because stuff. Mm. there's no one there <laughs> so like, yeah. it's almost like a yeah not yeah you, be, yeah um, if you were trying to hide yourself it's a good place to go mm. <laughs> that's but a little bit like can't get to yeah mm. that's a little bit what i think about all like the latest sort of um all the most credible um, UFO sightings from, say, like, uh, um, like Air Force pilots that usually happen over the ocean, don't they? And they usually say that they see things so go fast. in and out of the ocean. Yeah. I was like, well, if you were, if you were say, wanting to hide, you wouldn't go on mainland, would you? No. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. be above London. <laughs> no, and, and more of the Earth is covered by... Um, <laughs> it's, it's covered by water anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like yeah. you've got such a vast area to almost like have as your base, and then it's almost like if they want to then pop in, pop into land, mm. yeah. then they can, but it's, it's like, like it makes sense. it's like as well. I, I think it's Mount Shasta or something. Mount and there's Shasta. Just, uh, and that, that, yeah, and there's like loads of UFO sightings of like UFOs actually going into the mountain and like disappearing. Oh, yeah, stuff. I've heard a couple like, of things about that. <laughs> yeah. I've heard like, well, like, I'm not sure if it's the same mountain, but I've heard a couple of things similar to that mm. and I, rem I remember I heard like a really interesting one that was along that vein I think I'm, I think I might have talked about it on Pandora's box I can't remember and it was like um, about somebody who 
had like found this this almost like this entrance um but then when they went there like their phone wouldn't work and they got this like really bad headache and everything like that um, and then they suffered like amnesia and then they when they finally got the memories back they went back there and it was like it was almost like a cave fall had happened there but it was almost like it still looked like an entrance way, but then it was like there was like no way of getting inside, and it just all seemed a little bit weird and eerie. It's mm. like now that they've been discovered, they had to yeah. like break down the base. Yeah, that was almost like what it was like. <laughs> Spots around the earth. Space Going back to uh, to the story. Space. Yeah. What is Flemish? Who- Flemish is a f- um, is like a part of um, northern Belgium. Oh, right. I was gonna say, where's Flem? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So like the Flemish people. So Belgium is a bit like Switzerland in terms of like they they have like mul- different languages there. Um, but whereas it, in Switzerland, it's like half the country speak French and half of them speak German. Um, in in Belgium, it's like the bottom half speak French and then the top half speak Flemish. But mm. it's a bit weird why we call it Flemish because I think it's essentially Dutch. Right. But we don't say that they speak Dutch. We say that they speak Flemish because it's like Belgian people that speak that. We call it Flemish, and mm. they have their almost like their own traditions and history their own twang yeah yeah so it's like not so it's like northern belgium so it's like on the sort of the coast mm. or, you know what i mean so it'd be like on the right hand side of the netherlands mm. um so yeah that's the flemish people but um yeah nice. it seemed like a lot of them were getting you know yeah like killed and stuff like that around that time so that's what they were saying they could have been potentially flemish children yeah but i tell you what i love that freaking her her like account of like what happened before they were mm. found by like the the farmers essentially is so freaking fascinating mm. i love that saying that they came the from a land of perpetual, perpetual twilight, twilight where like the sun never shone and yeah and then they that's just... why I th- the, the underground thing made me yeah. think. And, and where she said about tunnels it's mm. like if there were like tunnels to those places to yeah. those places but you could almost you were close to the edge so you heard from outside these bells ringing and you followed yeah. the sound well they said they went into a cave yeah they found a cave and like, went in and they heard distantly like some bells and they were like, following the sound of the bells yeah and then eventually came out in like what we would just know as earth i guess mm. Mm. and then they said that that they now realize that the bells are the sound of just saint edmund's church mm. but i guess maybe they had never heard anything like that before and but church bells do sound lovely as well don't they mm. i think and, we take them for granted because we hear them all the time as well like, yeah. they, could, they could carry well, there's a whole town or a that's whole what they're city. designed for yeah, right? exactly. that's what they're designed for yeah mm. i remember i went to bristol recently um went to go see my friends and yeah. we went for a night out and i decided to go get some water the next day right in the morning gotta stay hydrated kids exactly mm. so i was walking down and i went to is it college green in mm. Bristol, Mm -hmm. where the bells are, and I was just sat out there with the water, and it was almost a bit like entrancing then. Mm. Like I was sat on this bench, and I I don't know what they were doing, but they had these bells going for like a good ten minutes where I was just sat there. Mm. Yeah, and I just remember being sat there like this is actually a little bit like crazy. Well, (laughs) I think it's probably designed deliberately for that. Not not just the noise, but obviously originally the hot one of the reasons why churches were built to be such grand spectacles is to almost like make the local populace be in awe because everyone would have believed in God in those days. And it was the whole idea that like, surely a man could not create something like this. Yeah. Like it would have had to be divine intervention. Mm. And it was part of a way obviously to keep people in check because mm. it's like, well, the lords of the land, like God is on their side. So you also need to do what the Lord says because otherwise mm. it's like, if you go against the Lord, it's like you're going against God. And then it's like a way of sort of like controlling people, isn't it? But it's like everything had to be like awe. Like, so you mm. go in the stained glass windows, like the ornaments, mixed with like the almost like otherworldly and powerful bell chimes and um yeah it used to be like even like a very like um revered thing to do to, if you were like a bell chimer mm. Mm. michael dom's bell chimer do you know that? yeah i remember mm. Did, he does it is it in still does it in Cannington, yeah, yeah yeah and in west Huntsville, yeah ah yeah. cool yeah, because I remember when I was living in Tat Cannington, and you'd hear yeah. you'd hear them doing. So you would it, have you know? heard my, my uncle Dom's bells. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> ringing away. Yeah, but he it, said there's that there's a, a real nap. Pat- yeah, there's yeah. a pattern and a rhythm to it of it for like you know there's different ropes mm. and you've got to pull those ropes at different times and stuff and you yeah. get full on melodies yeah. out of them and stuff. Mm. Yeah, he said he said that like um one like you know he he's sort of wanted to I don't know if he wanted to fully pack it in but doesn't want to do it as much as he necessarily does but obviously as you can probably imagine not as many people get into it nowadays. Mm. I think when my Uncle Dom would have still been growing up, my Uncle Dom's like 51, um, 
you know, he was still growing up in the 70s, it would be more one of those things that, like, if you lived near a church, your parents might have been like, you know, you need to go help with the bell ringing. Mm. It was like, whereas nowadays, can you imagine, like, just having a kid and being like, you have to go to the local church to do the bell ring? Like, it just wouldn't really I happen so really much. interesting thing to, to do, you know, I've, to, yeah. to have got into I've and watched done him for do it as well. That's crazy. Yeah, I've watched him do it, and it, and it's, and it is definitely cool, because it's like, it's the same with any other, like, almost instrument. You realise it's like an instrument. Mm. Mm. It's not just pulling, a, like, a big freaking rope. It is like an instrument. Like, you have to get the timing down mm. and it's like the synchronicity in that and obviously there's more than one bell ringer and it's all like yeah yes it's cool it's cool how mm. how hard you pull it as yeah. well you, you don't want to go too crazy i can imagine yeah there's yeah, yeah. he's like yeah he's like um he, he's got like videos of him doing it and stuff it, it, it does look pretty interesting i think there's like i think like you have to have like oh, like three people doing it mm. at the same time mm. or something like that um yeah and it's cool and as you said he said that like if you like sort of um aren't used to it you can get like rope burns really easily and stuff mm. like that <laughs> Dominic and the and the bell ringers yeah. it's a good name for the bat for a bat yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's interesting with the green screen, green skin as well mm. Mm. like mm. you were saying that it was like a malnourishment but I almost thought you were going to say originally it was because they would just be like eating loads of green beans and, the, and it was like I the chlorophyll or something weird. yeah I did kind of think that because you hear like mm. people when they you know, eat too much of a certain thing. Mm. Like um, there was that like, kid that drank D. too much Sunny yeah, D. Yeah, he went orange. <laughs> yeah, because like, when Sunny D came out, this would have been before Born Cool's time. But when Sunny D came out, for some reason, it like took the world by storm, oh, and really? everyone like loved Sunny Delight, didn't yeah. they? And it became like a bit. And I remember you could buy it like everywhere. Like, I wasn't a me- like uh, I did like it. I wasn't like this. I wasn't like mentally into it. But I would still drink quite a lot of it. Mm. And there was this kid that became like addicted to it, and he would drink like four liters of it a day, or whatever. And his skin went orange, wasn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's addicted mental. to the sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so much sugar. I swear, in him, is it they? even around now? Okay, it is, I remember but you, you wouldn't see it got very like often. Florida version, and there yeah, was like California, so California, and Florida, weren't there? Yeah, that's like, so funny, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, did they even taste any different? I don't even know. I can't remember. I think they did. Yeah. What was yeah, even in it? Bit. Like I sugar, <laughs> you know what I mean? sugar and uh, sugar and um, did it have OJ and in dye? It? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, did it have actually actually have proper? I don't think it was not? like maybe from a concentrate, not yeah, from not any like yeah. you know. Yeah, that's weird. But yeah, I mean, I, I do think it's like there are several really interesting things about the case that make it seem more weird than. Um, let's face it, the most the most uh, logical answer is usually the correct one, but mm. I think. If you were like starving children on the run, the fact that they refused food for days, and he would have probably been um, offering them like common foods in Britain at the time, they like definitely when he like those foods, apples, bread, mm. meat, and I expect like in I expect like you know if he was like you know because it was like the lord of the lands, you know manor or, mm. or or whatever you want to call his abode. I bet it was pretty good food. He would have mm. been eating like the best food around. Mm. So I bet the bread was like proper, pure, nice, fresh bread out of the oven. Because mm. all the bre- obviously all the bread in those days would have been fresh out of the oven. There Some was no chickens. there was no instant bread. Mm. Yeah, it would all be like <laughs> chickens, venison, mm. beef. You know what I mean? Like really nice, fresh stuff. And let's mm. face it, back in those days it was all like grass fed, baby. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like lush apples and stuff. Mm. Like all of those, you know, pears. All com- like common British f- foods. Mm. A pork, wild boar, mm. things like that. So I expect, like, the idea that you would turn that down, but then you're, like, wandering the gardens, and then there's just, like, you see some little green beans, like, growing out of the dirt, and you're like... <laughs> yeah. That seems yeah. weird to me. That's what made yeah. me think they probably had, like, a like a raw kind of just, like, <laughs> They were raw vegans. Diet. <laughs> but, yeah, and they went green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a mixture of, like, being malnourished because you're not getting all the nutrients you need, plus everything's green. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know well, what I mean? My question like, is almost, like... Why though? Because I said like in like, like a why raw... were they only eating? Like... Yeah, like you think yeah, if you were a starving weird, kid, like place it must have been where they were living. That think about how starving you'd be. Or something. Yeah. Well, mm. well, I know, but think. Right, as I said, even if it was all that you were used to eating, if you were like starving, mm. um, it's a very visceral reaction, isn't it? Somebody offering you food mm. if you're like proper starving. And think mm. about. Imagine how hungry you are sometimes when you mm. go all day without eating. And then imagine if someone gave you like some delicious pork and like a nice apple. Yeah. I would like it would disappear in like ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean to me? And I'd be like, oh my oh my god. I suppose oh my if, god. You're, if you're so used to eating a certain type of food, then it would mm. be more like off putting than like mm. do you know something like if I went to China right now and they put me like like some like 
I don't know, some, some kung bull pao. testicles and some, oh. Oh. I don't know, just oh, tarantulas. And, some, and a bit of snake. Oh, and then yeah. it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and like, yeah. On this big platter, and yeah. to them, that's delicious. And yeah, chicken feet that they're like gnawing on and that, you know. Mm. And and put uh, and I was real hungry, and they put it in front of me. I'd probably eat it, but I'd be a bit like, Ugh. But even so, right, let's <laughs> let's just say that they were Flemish, right? Mm. And that they had, like, crossed the, the narrow sea to um, to England, Right. The people in Belgium at the time, the yeah, French, I, I don't their think diet Flemish. would have been the same yeah. pretty much yeah, definitely. as maybe just a bit of caviar That's as well. That's what's so interesting to me. It must have been a place where their diet was completely different. To but then it's like, was how it? the hell did yeah. they just randomly get to Woolpit yeah. in mm. Suffolk? Underground. Underground. And subterranean and sub- caverns. Sub- underground But then it leads land. you back to more of like a supernatural thing, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. some mm. paranormal, or just like some unexplained thing. Mm. It, 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 it is interesting. City and it probably helped them quite a lot, just having like the green beans initially. Because you get, if people are like starving, you have to sort of almost yes, like... you can't just give a, them an African into, child yeah. a McDonald's. And they yeah, 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 yeah okay. exactly. They would like get sick really yeah, sick. Yeah, it's, mm. like, it's like fasting and stuff. Like if you do a pro- it, like prolonged fast, mm. like a water fast or something, it's like start with some like watermelon. Or, yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah, a bit yeah, of fruit yeah. and a bit of soup, you know, to like kind of ease you in a yeah. bit. I know mm. that I know that like bodybuilders and stuff have to do that because you know that they like, um, they diet down but then they cut all their water out like two days before a competition mm. so that they, all their muscles show up but then it's like they were saying like um you can't just eat just go to an all you can eat buffet after that like you have to almost like they, they call it reverse dieting mm. so you diet down and then you have to reverse diet so if, yeah do you know what i mean mm. it's like you can't just then go ham mm. because you can like mess up your intestines and everything like and like and sometimes do like long-term damage to yourself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because it's yeah it's just like your body it's just too much almost of a strain on your body so it's almost have it, to just like every day by day just increase your calories by like 50 or something mm. yeah and it is super weird how you your body adapts to like stuff or eating differently like i even know it was it with like rupert our dog it's literally like he's on a set food he has his food and we don't really give him treat mm. like you know human food that much but like say do you ever you give him give like him, potatoes or meat well or we like do that? every now and again yeah. but like i don't like getting into, into mm. a habit bit of it mm. more for him like begging and stuff like that and just like yeah, you know his diet yeah. is like really yeah. good from like the food that he has um but yeah like say we gave him a full roof dinner the other day like after you know just because we had like yeah, well, yeah, might as well. and like you know but it he was like it, his body like after was like what the hell is this really? and then he puked up and stuff and it's like just because oh, he's not used savage. to eating it and it's like yeah Scraggs oh, does that sometimes. Love, yeah. And you can like, tell it's like they love it. Like he might gorge himself on something that they're not used to having if mm. like you have some leftover whatever meat or whatever. But then you can tell if they gorge themselves too much on it, it's almost like they like it too much and then yeah. they yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. end up, Damn. Yeah, and they end up <laughs> just throwing up and you're like, oh, yeah, no. Like, body's a bit like, what? what is this? This is mm. amazing, but what is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I feel like humans can be a bit like that sometimes as well. Oh, There's yeah. definitely been like times oh, yeah. where I've gone to like a nice restaurant or something mm. and even though I'm dying on the inside because I've eaten way too much, oh, I'm yeah. like, I gotta finish this meal. I gotta keep it's going. Too good. I always do it. You know, going. like you know, when you, if you ever go on like a holiday and you've got like either like all inclusive or half board. Mm. I usually go half board if I can, because then I think I like to have my breakfast there, but then I like to sort of explore wherever I'm at and go out for dinner. Yeah, or yeah. Or maybe yeah. I'll have the dinner in the hotel like once or twice, but mainly mm. you want to go out and explore the wherever you're at, don't you? But I usually like to go half board because it's like it's nice to just get up and go to breakfast, isn't it? Mm. Just chuck your shorts and your t-shirt on and go to breakfast. But it's almost like because I know it's almost like because I want to get my <laughs> money's worth. I eat like a day's worth of food at breakfast, and yeah. then it's almost like the the hour after that, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I just have to like go and like walk on the treadmill if there's like a gym there or something, just yeah. to like get, try and walk get myself back to back to normal. <laughs> but it's like I'm just like, oh well, I best get my money's worth. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I have like yeah. four eggs, a load of smoked salmon, like a bowl of fruit, some Greek yogurt, Woo-hoo. you know, like a bowl of porridge, a couple of glasses <laughs> of orange, breakfast. yeah, a couple yeah. of glasses of orange juice, couple of gl- cups of coffee. Do you know what I mean? It's just mm. like a couple of glasses of milk, and then yeah. I'm just like. <laughs> right, we're we gonna go back to bed. Yeah, 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 that's what you feel like. Just like, oh man, you're like you're no. pregnant afterwards. Yeah. You almost like tell yourself that you're just giving yourself energy for the rest of the day, but in reality, you're just yeah. taking for it the all away. The rest of the week, or? <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It's like so unnatural to eat that much in one go. Really, like how how could any one person need that much in mm-hmm. one go? Mm-hmm. Crazy, crazy, absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. So, were the children of Woolpit were they aliens? Were they fey folk? Were they Flemish children <laughs> whose parents mm. were slaughtered, uh, or any other strange cryptid or creature of the night? Um, what do you guys reckon? I mean, it's impossible saying it, really. Mm. I don't know. My favourite one is the underground. Oh yeah, that's my uh, favourite. Twilight. One. 
mystical. I wouldn't say um, extraterrestrial for some reason. That's no. not not really. Like, also, they know, looked human, a, other than yeah. the fact they were green. And the, uh, that guy who married her, the the arch uh, the archdeacon of Eli. Yeah. They said that they had a kid. Yeah. So um, I would be interested to know who the descendant is today. Yeah. Like, did the bloodline, mm. do you know what I mean? Did, is there like a descendant of them now? Yeah. Walking mm. around, because that'd be pretty cool. Just to think, of this, <laughs> what was it the place called? The Fields of Perpetual Twilight. Yeah. Mm. I, just, I just love the thought. The that land that of perpetual land twilight. Of twilight. Yeah, like I like the idea place. that they were like from like a forest and they grew up their whole life in the forest just eating like green stuff and that's mm. why they're green and that's why it was also like dark, yeah, they like said you said. they were like tending to the fields, didn't they, and stuff. Yeah, shall I read up the little excerpt like, again just because it's yeah, fascinating? Yeah, yeah, I'll read that. I think that was my favourite. Part just that bit yeah, yeah that's yeah. my favourite part because was that too. actually like yeah she that, that was um, that's a quote like that word quoted, for word that's literally it? a quote that has been written <laughs> down in, oh, the, in, so cool. in the chronicles of what was his name Richard DeCan that's awesome um, yeah uh, and, and I think it's interesting as well how she says that uh, they were inhabitants of what they can only roughly translate as the land of St. Martin, which means land that, like, which would imply that the language that they spoke originally was so different from English that it's not a true translation. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. It's like a lot of the things that are translated nowadays from, say, old Sanskrit or Egyptian or even Greek, ancient Greek, they're not necessarily 100% accurate. They are like the closest thing we can get mm. to an accurate translation, but they Sounded could mean... Quite, sounds quite religious. Yeah, I was going to say, is St. Martin something that we're like familiar with? Or no, is that just not, like a person? I'm not sure if there is a St. Martin in Christianity, right. but she, she said, we are inhabitants of what we can only roughly translate as the land of St. Martin, who is regarded with particular veneration mm. in the country which gave us birth. Which, as I said, is like... She's saying we can only roughly translate. So there's a St. Martin guy that was they were venerated. He yeah. was venerated where, wherever that or is. Or maybe by that point, maybe you could almost take away is because it was such a Christian society in England at the time, she was trying to put it in ways that we would understand. Yeah. Because everyone yeah, in England, it would I mean. have been like yeah. Saint this and Saint that. And mm. Yeah, so there was a... F Obviously, this person that they thought was saintly in in the in mm. the translation, not in 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 thing to God and stuff, but yeah. just like literally like a a person they like revered and, and yeah 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 exactly. Land, and yeah. maybe she uh, then naturally said, yeah. "I can only roughly really translate as yeah. Saint yeah. Martin." Like, like we worship, we clearly worship them the same way you worship your saints. Yeah yeah right. yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And so then cool. the Martin thing, I don't know. Maybe she just thought it sounded like Martin. 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 Yeah, or something. <laughs> I mean, you just don't know. Yeah, but then she went on to say we are ignorant of how we arrived here we only remember this that on a certain day when we were feeding our father's flocks so i guess like livestock mm. Mm. so that was you would think they would eat meat then yeah. yes another weird thing That's isn't it so another weird. inconsistency when we were feeding our father's flocks in the fields of perpetual twilight we came upon a cave on entering the cave we heard the sound of distant bells we wandered through the darkness for a long time, following the chiming of the bells in admiration, until we came out the other side and entered into bright sunlight, which was startling. And yeah, to them, I guess, like she's like saying, like if they lived in a land where it was just starlight all the time, nothing but starlight. Perpetual twilight. Yeah, so that's like starlight and then, I guess yeah. moon as well, but um, at least starlight. Then imagine how shocking it would be to be out in the sun for the first time. Yeah. It would be startling, mm. wouldn't it? Um, it was then that we found by we were found by the reapers of the fields. We now know that the bells we heard are those of your church at St. Edmund's. The sun does not rise upon our countrymen. Our land is little cheered by its beams. We are contented with that twilight which among you precedes the sunrise or follows the sunset. So yeah, basically 24-7, wherever they come from, it's always just night. <laughs> Moreover, a certain this is weird, this is weird as well, isn't it? Moreover, a certain luminous country is seen, not distant from ours, but we are divided from it by a very considerable river. So she's saying a certain luminous country is seen not far distant from ours. So to me, that means it's almost like, you know, like, in like, like Lord of the Rings, when you mm. see like Rivendell and, and Lothlorien almost like glowing. Yeah. Mm. It's like luminous. It's like illuminating. Yeah. Or even maybe like, you know how nowadays the cities at night, they're yeah. obviously lit yeah, up because of all yeah, of our yeah. street lights and Torches everything. Torches and if you think about back then, like, yeah, like huge yeah. torches mm. all around everywhere. And so it's like, yeah, she's saying like they could see a country from where they lived, and but they were separated from a big river, but they could see that it was just always illuminated. I'm mm. trying to like, in my head, picture what this place should oh, be me like. Oh, too. I've got, I've got an image in my head of yeah, it. I've yeah. got like an image in my head of it. I've got, it's almost like, I can imagine like, 
yeah, like almost like a, a field of like, you know, like a field and they're like work in the fields. And then there's like, yeah, there's like a big river and then there's almost like, yeah, just this like glowing, this like mm. silvery glowing mm. like city. Like so above I don't the, imagine the it with like a, like, you know how they said they went through a cave? Mm. I don't imagine they were almost, almost living in a cage. I imagine they could still see the sky. Oh yeah, th- she, says like, she says yeah. that. She says that. She says that they were tending the father's flocks in the fields of perpetual yeah, toil. Yeah. So they were out in a field, mm. and with the stars above them. But then they found they came upon a cave. It says, "Yeah, um, we came upon a cave." So I guess they were just wandering and playing that, and they came across mm. a cave that they'd never come across before, mm. somewhere near the fields. But then they went. They went into the cave at first, just in the entrance. I guess just to think like, oh, this is pretty cool. Mm. But then distantly heard the chiming of bells deep in the cave, mm. and then thought, what is that? Mm. Walked and towards it, and it was getting before, yeah, it was it was getting louder and louder. So they were walking more and more, and then just came out into the, into what into like our world. Mm. So they crossed some like portal or something through the cave, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, I, it does make you wonder that, doesn't it? Like the inside, what makes it perpetually twilight? The is that, yeah, I, I I still think underground somewhere in the earth, like there's just, there'd just be this like through the cave it would open out and like you yeah. know I, I've got that image in my head so they are almost also, in a huge cave do you know what cave? I just remembered that story you told me about that guy whose brother went and oh, disappeared yeah. and his hat and the letter yeah. was found in a cave mm, maybe what? he walked through it and went to the Machu land of Pichu. perpetual twilight <laughs> or some other just completely other one yeah. random Whoa. world yeah my friend Raul's brother who got lost in Machu Picchu in like the 80s um, and he was supposed to be met. He was supposed to meet him there, um, and he, he he didn't meet him there. He couldn't. He had to go a few days after, um, and then he was just looking for his brother and couldn't find him. But like, it was when not many people would go to Machu Picchu. Like, it was like uh-huh. really not loads of tourists and stuff. And um, yeah, they, he could never find him. But just in in this cave, um, like up by Machu Picchu, they just found his hat and a little letter that was like addressed to his his then girlfriend. And yeah, and that's that was the last he ever saw of his brother. And like, no, they never what? found a body. They never like saw any signs of struggle or blood or anything like that. And mm. yeah, and he was like super mystical apparently. Like, and he said, um, him and his brother also saw a UFO once mm. outside of their house in Peru. And he actually took me to the to the house where it happened mm. and was explaining that it was like this like. Um, almost like this sound this like that was like above and they could feel like a vibration and stuff and he said he was really scared but his brother was like no let's go outside let's go outside and have a look um but he said he wouldn't and his brother went out and like yeah looked above and they said that there was a disc like above their house and like he said he's like you know that's what he came to he had like this connection with like extraterrestrials and stuff that's crazy so he was always like you know maybe maybe he was in contact with them and went through this portal like up Machu Picchu did he ever tell you (laughs) what was in the letter uh, no, it was some. It, he said it was to do with um, it was to his to his girlfriend, and it was nothing like oh, I'll overwhelming, leave you, overwhelming, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll leave right. you forever or anything. It was just like quite a generic letter, I think. Yeah. But he didn't exactly tell me the contents of it, but um, it wasn't anything like. It wasn't super like suspicious. I'm crossing the veil now no, or something like that. It no. also reminds me, right. of, yeah. So it was like that, and also just you know the missing four one one cases mm. of people just vanishing into thin air. Makes you wonder, do you know what I mean? Are they entering some sort of weird portal? Mm. Or it, it was really interesting because th- this guy Raul didn't tell me this story like until near the end of our like our time together. Right, right, right. <laughs> but he was like, you know, these people that you really get a connection with that you meet, and it's just like yeah. he was. And he, I met all his family, and his mum was like was like ninety eight or something, and she mm. was this beautiful Peruvian lady. Um, and um, yeah, he was said. He, he told me about it, but he said it was like you know a traumatic thing within their family mm. that they never really talk about that much, and that for years it's been a mystery for them that they've had to like come to terms with and like get over. And mm. it, but just the fact that there's never been any kind of closure, um, closure on it or anything, yeah. and it was such a mysterious, weird like mm. occurrence of it happening anyway. And the fact Raul was supposed to be going there with him at Machu Picchu, and he said he was very into like energies, and and that that he was in, saying that there's more, that there's more to life than we know, and everything, and going and exploring it, and then he just disappears forever. Whoa. It's like, yeah, crazy. Poor that Raul. is crazy. That is cool, isn't it? Well, so who yeah. knows? Maybe there are beings from beyond our realm beyond that sometimes veil. pierce the veil and enter our world, and maybe there are missing people from our realm. 
who have done the same, never to be seen again and are now wandering the realms of perpetual twilight. <laughs> we shall never truly know. But all I do know is I am glad that you have joined us here this evening for Mystery Mondays. I bet you will have a very good week and we will see you again next Monday for another mystery. Ah, yes. Whose journey is it? Whose journey is it next time? Whose story is it? <laughs> Bullwinkle's My story. story. Bullwinkle's journey yes. will, will be, be a journey concluded. And a story. Right, right. Have a good week, everyone. Cheerio. Goodbye. Cheerio.